There are passages of Scripture that we know and recognize when we hear them, but we often don't know where they're from. Today's reading from 1 Thessalonians is one of those passages. You should immediately recognize a portion of it, as I often read a bit of this passage at graveside services and even sometimes at funerals as well. In this passage, Paul wants to make sure the Thessalonians' belief in the resurrection is solid, and he wants them to remind each other of their common faith so that they can strengthen each other in troubled times. Unfortunately, a whole theology has grown up around just one verse, a theology which was unknown in the early church or even up through the Reformation. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Monday, April 29th, 2024. So the resurrection is the central doctrine of the Christian faith. Some may want to debate that point, but to me it is what makes the rest of the faith make sense. Throughout my years of ministry, I have found that it brings immense comfort to believers, especially when they are either facing death themselves or mourning the death of someone they love. It is this comfort that Paul highlights in 1 Thessalonians. He writes, But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. From my perspective, the comfort of the doctrine that the doctrine of the resurrection brings exists on two levels. First and foremost, first and most obvious, it provides comfort that we will continue living, but in a new way, a life where we will live with Christ and with all of the faithful of every time and place forever. It reassures us that we will be reunited with those we, whom we love who have also died. There's another less obvious way the resurrection provides comfort, and I think only those who face persecution the way the early church did can fully understand it. Most of us live enormously blessed lives, lives free from any real persecution. Oh, I'm aware that there are those who think Christians in America are facing persecution, but really, they're just facing a little pushback for their more aggressive brand of the faith. What they consider to be persecution pales in comparison to the kind of persecution faced by many early Christians. For them, the doctrine of the resurrection was an assurance that, that what persecution they faced was not worthy of comparison to the joy of life in the resurrection to come. That's why Paul urges the Thessalonians to encourage one another by reminding them of the reality of the resurrection. Now, there is one verse in this passage that some modern Christians believe points to something they call the rapture. They rightly believe that when Christ returns, we will be united with Christ forever. But they have com com created a complete theology based on this idea that makes several leaps of imagination, leaps far beyond what Scripture actually says. Paul here isn't talking about the so-called rapture. He's simply saying that when Christ comes, there will still be faithful believers alive and well, and he's just accounting for them. They apparently won't have to die in order to experience the reality of the resurrection. Made-up doctrines like pre-tribulation millennialism, post-tribulation -tribu post millennialism, and post-millennialism go way beyond what Scripture actually teaches, and serve to obscure the more fundamental truth of the resurrection. One of you recently sent me a wonderful cartoon about this. It shows a woman pointing to her bookcase 
and showing a man her collection of books on the rapture by the church fathers, by theologians of the Byzantine era, and by the reformers. The punchline is visual. For the bookcase she points to, well, it's empty. That's because the rapture is nowhere to be found in any of these writings, except in the most peripheral way. It was certainly not a major belief throughout the long history of the church, at least not until the mid-1800s. No, Christian comfort isn't based on some imagined rapture. It is based on the resurrection. Paul spoke of the resurrection to provide comfort to the Thessalonians. It has, count, it has comforted countless generations of the faithful, and it still comforts those who mourn to this very day. Tomorrow, Paul reminds us that speculation about when these things will happen is a fool's errand. But for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.